Hey, what's up everyone and welcome to the School of Personal Finance. So for over 10 years now, I've been helping New York State educators plan for retirement, understand their pension options, understand how their 403B works and how to invest in it, understand their 457 plan as well, and all the benefits that go into being a member of the New York State Employee Retirement System or the New York State Teacher Retirement System. So in this video, I'm going to dive a little bit deeper into the 403B plans and why I think they are so important to your overall financial plan and retirement plan. Planning. So I'll talk about the pros of investing and having a 403B. I'll also talk about the negatives and the things that you need to look out for as well. So I hope you find this one helpful. Let's get to it. All right, so real quick before we get started, head over to School of Personal Finance, download my free budget template, and check out all the resources that I have over there. Also, if you are a public school district employee in New York State, come check out my private Facebook group where we talk all about 403B and personal finance for teachers. I would love to have you become a member of the community over there. All right, so let's start out with high-level overview. What is a 403B plan? So now, 403Bs are made for nonprofit organizations or public municipalities like schools school districts. It's very similar to a 401k plan at a private employer. So 403b plans are voluntary, meaning you don't have to contribute to a 403b plan, right? Being a teacher in New York State, you have many great benefits. One being that you are going to get a pension when you retire based on whatever tier you are, how many years of service you have, right? There's going to be a pension calculation. And when you retire, you get a pension for the rest of your life. So this 403b account, it is not required of you to contribute to it but there are many good reasons why you should now one major difference right off the bat with a 403b plan is that it's multi-vendor and what that means is that there's many different options in the school districts for who you could choose to enroll with your 403b compared to a 401k at a private company where you just go ahead and you enroll in your company's 401k and you pick your investment options with a 403b there are many different companies that offer 403b plans within the district so that's the first step is figuring out what company you want to go with with your 403b enrolling and then choosing the investment options so now why would you want to enroll in it what are the advantages of having this 403b plan so the first advantage is that you get tax deferral on your contributions so what does that mean what that means is that when you take money out of your paycheck and you contribute it into your 403b plan you do not pay taxes on that money so let's do a very simple example if you make a hundred thousand dollars a year as a teacher and you contribute $10,000 a year into your 403b plan, that $10,000, you're gonna be putting it in paycheck by paycheck, spread throughout the year, but you will not be taxed on that $10,000. So at the end of the year, you made 100 grand, but your taxable income for the year that's gonna show on your W-2 is only gonna be $90,000. So you are not gonna pay federal or state income tax on those contributions. So you get a tax deduction for contributing to a 403b plan. And then the money, it goes into the plan. You choose your investment options. The money is invested, right? And hopefully it's going to grow over time. And you don't pay taxes on the money as it's growing either. So if it grows from $10,000 in the first year to $12,000, you don't pay taxes on that $2,000 growth. It is tax deferred. When you pay the taxes on this thing is going to be in retirement when you start to pull money out. So much later on, when you are retired and you start taking withdrawals from it, that's when you will pay ordinary income tax on this money. Now, one note on that is that many school districts now offer a Roth 403B option. So with a Roth 403B, you do not get the tax deduction up front. Instead, you take after-tax money, contribute into the 403B plan, but then it grows tax-free forever. When you take it out in retirement, your withdrawals will be tax-free, which is nice, but it really depends on your specific situation and your tax bracket now, what you think your tax bracket will be in retirement to determine which one is the better one for you. But the traditional 403B is much more common these days as far as uh, the 403B plans go. Now, another big benefit of contributing to your 403B plan is that you are training yourself to live on less than what your actual income is. So if we go back to that example of somebody who's making 100 grand a year, let's say that they're contributing $20,000 a year to their 403B plan. That means that they are living on $80,000 a year, which is awesome because when they do eventually retire, they're going to get a pension. And let's say that they are a tier four member, right? Which a majority of teachers out there are right now. With a tier four member, if you work for 30 years, when you retire, you will have a 60% pension of your final average salary. 
So if you get 60%, let's say your final average salary is 100 grand. That means your pension would be $60,000 a year. Now, because you were living on only 80,000 before, you only have a $20,000 gap between your salary, your take-home pay, compared to what your pension is when you retire. And then the third benefit, it's having that party money. It's happiness. It's having a better retirement. I've worked with hundreds of teachers that have retired, and the ones that have the most in their 403B plan, those are the ones that really go skipping out the door, right? Because they know that they have this pot of money that they could use to go travel the world, to spoil children, grandchildren, whoever it is that they want, and they're not stressed about money. It's the ones that never really took advantage of the 403B, and they're really relying on their pension where they don't feel like they have you know, that nice fund to really go and enjoy retirement. So juicing up that 403B, getting in the habit of doing it, it just leads to a much happier retirement. All right, so let's go through some of the negatives and the things you need to look out for. So, I mean, the first negative is obvious is that you're going to have less money, right? So if you're plowing money into your 403B plan, then that means that's money that you're not able to use right now. So if things are tight right now, if you're living paycheck to paycheck, then it's very hard to contribute to a 403B plan. And I've seen many instances where people, they try to contribute to their 403B plan, then they go through some rough times, they don't have an emergency fund, they have credit card debt, and the next thing you know is they're taking loans against their 403B, or they're trying to take hardship withdrawals against their 403B, which are going to be taxed and penalized. So it's not a great situation if finances are very tight and you're trying to make it happen with the 403B and then you have one little setback and you need to start taking loans and hardship withdrawals. It just gets ugly from there. So you don't want to put yourself in that situation. You know, the next big negative is just the confusion around 403Bs and how they're distributed in the schools, how they're sold. So like I mentioned earlier in this video, you know, you might have 30 different companies that offer 403B plans in your school. And when you go to sign up, it's like they give you, you know, in the payroll office, they give you a list or you go to the Omni website and they have all these different vendors that you could choose from. And how would you know which one is the right one to choose from? So it's confusing. So it's like you pick a name that you've heard of before or you ask a coworker who they're using. And the downside is a lot of these companies they are very, very high cost. And they have terrible plans where they lock you in for many years and you can't get out of them. And the expenses are like triple what a normal plan would have or a 401k plan would have. And you end up paying you know, thousands and thousands of dollars in fees throughout the years. And you don't even know it because it doesn't even show anywhere. It doesn't show on the statements. All the fees are hidden. So you have to be very careful. Like some of the big insurance companies, they're just complete ripoffs. And unfortunately, those are the big players in the schools and who most people have their 403B plans with. So you wanna be very careful with that. One of the biggest 403B companies just recently got fined $50 million for not being transparent and hiding the fees that are actually charged in the account. And then the third negative that I'll throw out there that you don't hear about too much, and it's a good problem to have, but I have experienced a lot through working with retired teachers is that they accumulate a lot in their 403B plan, but it's like a tax bomb. You know, they look at it like a tax bomb. Every time that they have to take money out, they're paying ordinary income tax on it and they don't wanna pay the taxes on it. So they're very hesitant to pull money out of it. And then when you reach a certain age, right now that age is 72, there's talk about them increasing that age. There's legislation that they're trying to pass that will increase that age, but that's called a required minimum distribution, an RMD. And that's when the IRS, they force you to take distributions from your 403B accounts, your retirement accounts, because they want the tax revenue. So you hit that magic age right now, 72, and they say, all right, you gotta take out this amount from your 403B every year, and the amount goes up a little bit every year, and you have to pay taxes on it. So some teachers that I work with, it's like they don't need the money, they're doing okay, but they're forced to take it out and pay the taxes on it. Or if you have a big event, if you wanna give you know, a child or a grandchild you know, 50,000 bucks for whatever it is, you're hesitant to do that because you know that you have to pay the taxes on it, so you'd rather just continue to defer it. Again, I think that's a good problem to have, right? If you have all this money sitting there and you know you got to pay the taxes on it but um, but that could be a negative you know in retirement if you accumulate too much in these plans and you really don't need the money but overall i do think it's very important to start early contribute as much as you can 
build up that 403b balance so that once you retire you feel flush you feel like you have this nice big retirement account that you could draw from whenever you need to to go on nice vacations to take trips to do things to redo your house whatever it is you know you don't feel like you are just stuck with that pension payment and you're kind of living paycheck to paycheck you have this other pool of money that you've saved throughout your life that you could then go ahead and pull on and I especially like it when you pair it with maybe Roth IRA accounts or you start building some type of tax-free bucket that you could also pull from so it's just part of an overall great financial plan I joke with teachers all the time that pension it's worth millions and having it it relieves a lot of the stress and the pressure from you financially but don't rely on that alone. Pair it with these big retirement accounts. Then you have the best of both worlds and you can pull from these in retirement to really make sure that you enjoy yourself and also have a legacy to pass on to your family. So I hope that you found this one helpful. As always, if you'd like for me to look at your 403B and try to figure out how much you're paying in fees, even though sometimes it's hard for me to figure it out and we have to call the company and ask them for a breakdown of the fees. But if you'd like me to help you with that, reach out to me. My email is rich at schoolofpersonalfinance.com. I would be happy to go through it with you and try to figure it out. Please make sure to share this video with all of your coworkers and friends that work in the New York State Public School District, and I'll see you again in the next video. Thanks.